It's the Central Weekly, a weekly podcast from the Central Podcast Network. John, hello. Hey, Jared. You've got me, Jared. There you are. And John Hinninger, your host for the Central Weekly. Here and we are. This is going to be a big episode. Is it? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about rest. Uh, within the context of our fresh new full series at yeah. Central, but we have a very special guest for episode number 46 of the Central Weekly. Ladies and gentlemen, Meredith Foster from WBGL and the Unfolding Podcast is going to be on the Central Weekly as our guest. I have no doubt she's going to be a fantastic guest. I met her uh, a couple of months ago during oh, a, you know, at a concert here so at kind. Central. And just, I mean, the real deal. I'm excited for you to have a conversation. Yeah, we're going to talk all things WBGL, all things podcast, what she's learned in the podcast world. Uh, you know, she, I mean, hers, the unfolding is very similar to how we do our guest spot. We just want to hear how God's moving in their, their lives of our guests. She's doing the same thing. She has been outstanding success with the unfolding podcast. We're, I'm excited to hear her story and hear mm-hmm. how God's been working in her life. Uh, so stick around for that. You know, maybe go, if you want to, we're not going to feel bad if you're going to zoom past us to listen to her then just come back later that's all we ask because we're going to talk about rest fresh new full before we get to our special guest meredith foster from wbgl and the unfolding podcast john this was a great sermon i think it was again something i need to hear because again we're you said it we're a lot alike in the fact that we don't know how and when and well we're, we kind of do now but we don't rest as much as we should. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is something that I've struggled with. Uh, I mean, I said it in the sermon, but this is something that I've struggled with. I um, mean, really, all of my working days, um, I've, I've struggled with this. I, I grew up in a house, and this is not a, a fault to my parents, but this is um, yeah, this is just a different culture, different era. Um, but I grew up in a house with, with a dad who said, Always, it is better. It is always better to crawl in sick than call in sick. Oh, I never heard that. And I mean. So I'm like, I grew up with this yeah. mentality, like, it doesn't matter how bad you feel, you show up to work yeah. and you work hard. And, you know, I mean, like my dad, um, that's just, I mean, I would say that that is one of his character traits is like, mm-hmm. he just, he, he works hard. He overworks, um, sometimes. And that is, that is in me. And I have those same tendencies. And I think a lot of us do. Do you give us that, that first, cause I really thought you hit it really hard right at the beginning when you were to that slow down line. Where you were rhyming like a gangsta. Uh, well, you know, that is, <laughs> that is uh, my, my thing, Jared. Um, but sometimes we go and we go and we go. Even though we know what's best for us, we feel the wear down. We know that we're headed for a breakdown, but we refuse to slow down. I am 100% guilty of that. Gangster life right there. That was good. What up? But it's, <laughs> gosh, it's so true. And especially when you have wives like we do that care mm-hmm. for us, mm-hmm. they're, they're like almost our alarm. It's like, hey, you need to slow down. You've been going at it mm-hmm. too hard. Um, and But yet that's what really we should have. The Holy Spirit should be. He should, he's the one kind of nudging us to say, hey, slow down. And I love that you really put the whole lesson into three segments because we need rest, not just for our body, mm-hmm. not just for our soul, but also our mind. Yeah, right. Physical, mental, spiritual rest. Yep. Um, three segments there. And I don't ever want to give the impression that hard work is a bad thing. And, and I don't think you do and, that. And that's why I started out by talking about how you know God sets the tone right out the gate. Genesis 1-1, God is creating things. He's yeah. making physical things and yep. working hard. And he does that for six days. And he rests on the seventh. Mm-hmm. Again, not because God needs the rest. Yeah. He never grows weak or weary. Yeah. He never grows tired. God didn't need the rest, but he knew that we would need the rest. And so he sets the example and then his example turns into a command, the fourth of the 10 commandments. And it says, you know, observe the Sabbath, which is a day of rest. Mm -hmm. Um, And so uh, God knows that rest is a necessary thing for us. And I liked how you said that it's a practice of our trust. It is Uh, really. And I, and that's a, that's a really a hard line. I'd love to put people in place and basically <laughs> challenge you to, 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 to rest on the Sabbath. It really, I mean, it seems Find a day once a week. It's counterintuitive um, yep. to us. It doesn't make sense. And I'm sure it didn't in the Old Testament oh, yeah. either. Um, but Especially it's a principle you, yeah. of faith. It's a, a practice of trust, even if you don't understand it, even though we fight it, God's commands are always for our best. Yeah. Actually, in Mark uh, 227, Jesus said the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements mm. of the Sabbath, yeah. which I think that is probably a, a mind mm-hmm. shift for a lot of us. You yeah. know, we think like, I gotta, this is just another thing on the list, oh, but yeah. we don't realize that it's actually 
for our good. And it's going to be challenging. I mean, we've got things, if we're involved in things, organizations, clubs, sports, they're going to schedule you on a Sabbath. And that's so we got, you got to be creative in how you're going to try to carve out a day. And, but think about it. When God put that into practice, especially for the Jewish people, if you didn't work, you didn't eat in most cases. So you almost had to do more work to get ready to rest. Mm. And I think that's a challenge that we can do. Like you said, he will make more out of your six than you than you can get out of your seven. I heard somebody say that somewhere. Um, I can't. You said it again. I don't even know who it was to give credit, but it's so true. It's such a. I mean, that's it's God's principle uh, in a sentence. You know, God will make more out of your six than you can Mm -hmm. out of your seven. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, and it could be different for all families. It could be mean. Hey, on our Sabbath, we're not going to be. doing laundry because laundry is a big deal at least at our house that's one thing that we've said hey we're not going to do laundry because it takes us away from resting it takes us away from family time and a lot of times you and we're going to get to this too we almost when it comes to spiritual rest we almost think that rest is just vegging out and doing nothing Mm -hmm. that's that's you can get some physical rest from that but gosh there's so many things that we need to challenge ourselves to do on our sabbath that are refreshing and bringing Mm -hmm. rest to our mental and spiritual side too. Yeah. I think these three components of rest are all tied together and, um, equally necessary. Yep. So you went into then mental rest after physical rest. Got to rest your mind. And gosh, and you said we live in a world at max volume. Yep. If that's not the case, I mean, I was in Eric's office the other day and Mm -hmm. he was showing me something on his computer and I couldn't see it. And I'm like, max out that, uh, that display. I'm Mm -hmm. constantly pushing Mm -hmm. the map. But I I thought of that too, because I'm constantly doing that in my own life where, okay, how, how hard can I push it? Because I want to try to get everything I can Mm -hmm. in a day. And again, there's nothing wrong with working hard, No, but there's something that is in it where we've got to rest our mind and the world you said this too the world knows this yeah there's your phone tells you it every day i mean this morning on my way to work the my watch said take a moment for mindfulness Mm -hmm. as you start start your day um throughout the day you know it'll say take a minute to Mm -hmm. breathe the world talks a ton about meditation Mm -hmm. the world knows the benefits of relaxing our thoughts focusing our minds and it's not like this novel concept that the world came up with. It's a yeah. scriptural concept that the world has adopted. Philippians 4, 8 says, fix your, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and mm-hmm. pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Like tune your mind, fix your mind and mm-hmm. think about these things for a while and see what kind of a result it has in your life. I mean, and think about the things that we use. If we use them at the full capacity all day, every day and didn't rest things, they're going to wear out like our lawnmower. If we just continue to use our lawnmower and just left it on, it's going to run out of gas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if we don't, if we don't fuel it up, and we don't let it rest, it's, it, you know, that's, yeah. You get the point I'm trying to make? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Maybe the old do. lawnmower. <laughs> the old Fresh lawnmower new full is what yeah. it needs. Yep, yeah, it really does. So yeah. then that really, because a lot of the points that I want to focus on are, are in your third point, spiritual rest. Um, because you said too often we rest from God when we need to rest in God. Yeah, I think from the from in. and the in oh. are the key words there. You know, we think, and you know, it's one of those things that I, I don't think there's a person hearing this who doesn't know exactly what I'm talking about. You get start to get busy, mm-hmm. and then the things that you feel like are going to have the least noticeable fallout are the mm-hmm. things that you start to cut out. Mm-hmm. And spiritual things, spiritual disciplines are at the top of that list. Nobody's going to know if I'm not taking time to pray. Nobody's yeah. going to know if I'm not taking time to read my Bible or to serve God in the way that he's mm-hmm. called me. People aren't going to realize that. They will for sure know if I don't show up at a basketball game. They're yeah. going to know if I don't come to dance class, they're going to, you know, I mean, like they're going to, so all of these things, um, that the world will notice from the outside, but they're probably not going to notice if I don't take time for my spiritual disciplines. But in the big picture, that's probably the one that shapes us the most from the inside out. I mean, it really does. And it's so often, I know in my life, I'll think, okay, I need rest. So I'm just going to veg out or, oh, I need rest. So like, for example, like it sounds weird to say, Hey, you need to rest spiritual rest. So you need to get up earlier in the morning with God. That doesn't seem, that seems counterproductive. It seems, okay, if I need rest, I need to, I need to sleep more, Mm -hmm. but it's, Hey, maybe just like the six out of seven days, maybe you need to get to bed earlier so you can get up earlier. And I think that's the thing we, I mean, we need to challenge each other as Christ followers to Mm -hmm. do that Mm -hmm. and to challenge and keep each other accountable on that. Cause if you see a friend or somebody just 
pushing, pushing, pushing and going ragged and not resting adequately. Cause I think, cause I, I'm going to say this out loud cause I think I do it. You can rest wrong mm. because for me, I'll like, oh, I need to rest. And then at nine o'clock at night, I'll just veg out on Netflix or veg out on something that's not really resting my mind. Physically, I'm probably getting a little bit, but I'm not getting all three of these components mm-hmm. because my mind's still going and I'm not with God in mm-hmm. on Netflix. So it's like, you have to have quality rest. And yeah. I think that's really what you're talking about in your third point. Yeah, for sure. I, I thought that Adrian Rogers quote, yes. um, he's mm-hmm. a legendary Baptist preacher, uh, Adrian Rogers said, if the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. Yeah. Um, because it's just a, a known concept that yeah. you're going to, you're going to cut out the things that are like your spiritual disciplines are going to get yep. yanked. So, so that's our thing. Lean in, lean away from things that you need to, so you can lean in to, um, those spiritual disciplines in your life, mm-hmm. because those are the things that are going to last. Like you said, yep. it may not be seen by people, but those are the things that are going to, and transform your mind the most. Yeah. Right. So. I mean, just as we wrap this up, I wanted to, um, hit that last little bit. Like I'm convinced, and this was just a really a revelation for me as I'm preparing this lesson, right? Like I'm convinced mm-hmm. that the devil, the thief, um, sent to steal and kill and destroy mm-hmm. wants you to live the tired life. Yeah. Because when you're living a healthy, balanced, rested, God honoring life, when you're doing things like seeking his kingdom first, his ways, you're submitting to his commands and uh, putting your life in his order of things, then your life is filled with the Holy Spirit. And there's this obvious evidence, right? Which is love, joy, peace, patience, Mm -hmm. kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, which it's by no coincidence mm-hmm. that the evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life mm-hmm. is exactly the opposite of the evidence mm-hmm. of fatigue in your life. I, I mean, love that 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 that, that diagram. That we fatigue put produces irritability. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, emotional responses, mm-hmm. all kind of anxiety. The things that fatigue brings in your life is the opposite of what the Holy Spirit produces in your life. So of course, the devil wants you to live the tired life because, in essence, yeah. he has the opportunity to strip you of the witness. God wants for your life. Yeah. Like you said, neglecting rest will rob you of God's best. For sure. Gangster life rhymes right what there. What up? Yeah. And I mean, here's the thing. Do the hard work you need to do to get rest. That sounds, again, mm-hmm. counterproductive. But like you said, do, we need to be developing the fruits of the Spirit, and we can't be doing it when we're just exhausted and limiting in ourselves because the Holy Spirit works best when we rest. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, did it, was that a little bit of a rest? It rhyme? was a good rhyme. A li- yeah. A little bit. I don't think it was a full thing. But like, like Mr. Deeds when he stands up. Yes. Good, good rhyme. And here's the thing you need to do. I loved how we, and again, if you were in service, and, and we just, we, and we were talking about rest today, mm-hmm. but rest in scripture. Mm -hmm. Um, And I loved that's how we ended our service this weekend at Central uh, with Psalm 23. Um, And that's a way to, I mean, when you're in scripture and you're really reading that, not to say, oh, I checked that off my list today. That's not what we're talking about. Again, there's there's a little bit of good that you're going to get out of that, but you're going to get the source of life when you rest in the word Mm -hmm. and you soak that in. You ask the Holy Spirit to say, hey, speak to me through your word. And when we're able just to quiet our minds, I, it, 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 and you don't, it doesn't have to be a long thing. Like you said, uh, during some crazy times, even at Christmas at Central, you found a dark room and you just let your mind rest. Right. I mean, I do. And, and <laughs> I like to be around people. Yeah. I like to shake hands and mm-hmm. smile and have conversations and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But especially, it's not just Christmas at Central, but, um, you know, when things get really busy, sometimes I'll feel myself needing to just, like, I'm just going to sit in a dark room for a minute mm-hmm. let my thoughts collect, uh, kind of pause, and yeah. then go back out into it. Yeah. I'm a guy that I think, too, I have found myself before I go into something that will cost a lot of my emotional and, and physical state. If I'm in the car by myself, I will sit there in the car by myself without the radio on for just a couple minutes. Mm. Um, just because I did that this morning or two days ago because I was getting out of the house. I was rushing out because I was running a little late. I thought I was running late. But then I, when I get into the van to drive over to, to do my bus route, I was like, I actually have five minutes. I don't need to go right now. So I just took that five minutes, turned the radio off and just kind of sat in silence and talked to God. Because that's the thing. The world thinks that you need to rest to empty your mind. And that's what's going to know. You need to rest to fill your mind. Mm. So it's fresh, mm. new. That's Very right. nice, Jared. That's right. Aha. I see your drink. That's it. Right so there. here's the thing. Next week, we're going to be looking at company. 
And I want to give a shout out to groups at Central. So if you're familiar with, if you're part of the Central family, or even if you're not, um, we would love for you to get involved with groups at Central. We're starting our, uh, at the end of January, January 29th, we're going to have our winter term of groups. And there's four options to choose from. And again, John's going to say it next week, but we can live our best life when we're in community with others mm-hmm. and taking in the company that God puts around us. And that's exactly what the mission of groups is at Central, is to get around God, people, and the Bible all in one aspect. And so we have a winter term. It's a small, it's kind of a small commitment to make 10 weeks. You know, it's kind of big for some people, but small for others. Uh, But centralnow.com slash groups is the place to go. Because again, if you're struggling with anxiety, struggling to need rest, and you're not around a group of people that can challenge you and, um, and sometimes confront you to do what's God's best. You need to be in community with others. Groups might be that for you. Yeah. Again, we don't rest from God things. Mm -hmm. We rest in God things. And that's a great way to do it. Okay. So that's it for us, John and Jared. I'm excited. I'm a little nervous too, because this is Meredith's a professional. Yes, she is. So we're going to take a little break. And then right after this, we'll be Meredith Foster from WBGL and the unfolding podcast right after this. Thanks, John. And we're back with the Central Weekly, and we have a very special guest. Uh, Gosh, I'm super pumped about this guest. We have the one, the only Meredith Foster from (laughs) WBGL and The Unfolding Podcast. Meredith, welcome to the Central Weekly. Thank you so much for having me. I don't get interviewed very often. I'm always doing the opposite. And so it's real. It's a privilege. Just excited to be a part of all the fun stuff you guys are doing. Well, here's the thing. We're here to tell your story about how God is moving in your life. And Hmm. have I mean, if you've I mean, this is exciting because you're on the other side. It makes me a little nervous that I'm on this side and you're on that side. (laughs) But here's the thing. I know a lot of our guests know you from WBGL. They've been knowing a lot about you from the Unfolding Podcast. And I'm excited just to share your testimony I'm because I, I don't know that much about you and I don't know how much our guests really know more about you they know the voice that's for sure yeah well that's probably by design because I don't think my story's that interesting and you know and I, I love I love I'm so wired to listen to other people's stories yeah, yeah. it's been um, fun this uh our century you started about two years ago with the unfolding podcast right yeah let's see I started uh, the first episode was May of 2019. So it's been over three. So yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and really we have very similar uh, storytelling with our podcast. Ours is people in, around, and through the central family. You are really, you're a bigger part of the central family because so many people from here in Mount Vernon and our, gosh, our radius listen to WBGL every single day. So I know that they'll be super pumped to see you and hear you um, Mm -hmm. on Central Weekly. Well, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I love that what you guys do. I love that you feature stories from your congregation because I, my personal belief is, you know, of all the things that help us grow, obviously, you know, prayer is important and studying God's words important and doing things like fasting and all those kinds of things. But hearing people's stories, it's the, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, there's yep. something so powerful about it. Yep. So I love that you guys have made that a part of what you do. We, we always say you can only have so much of uh, time in the atrium or the lobby here at church or any church mm-hmm. for, to hear people's stories. And, and if, and this is a great way again, to tell uh, on a mass scale, what, what God's doing in people's lives. So yeah. Meredith Foster, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. So tell us about where you grew up and uh, just kind of share your your testimony of how how you came in contact with the one, the only Jesus Christ. (laughs) So I grew up in Southern Illinois. I'm a Southern Illinois girl. Um, I was born and raised in a little town uh, southeast of Mount Vernon, probably 45 minutes to an hour away. It's called Ridgeway. Yeah. Wow. it's down in Gallatin County. Uh-huh. And so Gallatin County borders Kentucky and Indiana. It's right there yeah. where Illinois, Kentucky, yeah. and Indiana meet. Mm-hmm. And I call it God's country. It's just on the northern edge beautiful. of the Shawnee National Forest. It's Damn. just beautiful. Uh, Ridgeway surrounded by farm ground. So, and it's small, mm-hmm. probably about the same size as like Wayne City. It's about a thousand, you know, something oh. like that. And it was in for me, and I know small town. It can be a different experience for different people. Uh-huh. It was a wonderful way to grow yeah. up. Yeah. You know, my class had 48 people in it when we graduated oh, wow. yeah. and many of them, maybe most of them I'd gone to kindergarten with. Right. Yeah. So all those years together, just a very unique experience now, like my kids have had a very different experience because uh-huh. we live in a larger city and all that. Mm-hmm. 
So um, I loved, oh, excuse me, I loved growing up in, um, you know, small town. I loved the, um, just a lot of things about that. Yeah, my family, yeah, yeah, definitely. My family, um, my mom had grown up in the South. So she grew mm -hmm. up in Southern Tennessee. So she mm -hmm. was a Southern Baptist and that was very much a part mm -hmm. of her culture. Mm -hmm. So it was important to her that we went to church. Yeah. But we were not, I wouldn't, there wasn't a whole lot about our family outside of that. That was, you know, um, you know, I don't know how to describe it. Like my dad wasn't, you know, he didn't go to church. I wasn't quite sure where he was mm -hmm. spiritually for a lot of my life. It wasn't like we prayed together, those kinds of yeah. things, but it was important to her that we went. Yeah. And so I got baptized when I was nine and I, I kind of grew up in that. I think the thing that made the real difference for me is that just by providence, uh, the kids in my class were came from really strong Christian families. Mm -hmm. And so I saw something early on in them that I thought, I want to have a family like that. I was mm -hmm. really drawn to that. And my best friend, her parents were youth pastors. And so I got really involved with them and their church. And that kind of set me on a trajectory yeah. Um, of, uh, yeah, I think, I think in my, my, biological family they would always call me like i was the spiritual one i was like the christian kid out of the yeah. family you know and faith was a pretty big thing for me um all through growing up growing up in high school and even going off to college so um yeah so jesus has been a part of my life for a long yeah. long time yeah and it's neat that i mean here on the central weekly we have somebody local essentially i mean we've that's the crazy thing we've we people uh, an hour away are coming into mount vernon when you grew up was mount vernon like your hub when you went to the store and stuff or no evansville evansville, evansville indiana evansville. Yep. was it for us yep so that's where i was actually born and when mm -hmm. we did doctor's appointments or shopping or that kind of stuff we headed east to evansville so yeah, so no. tell me about your family how who, who, who's part mm -hmm. of that family there in where at where again ridgeway well no you're current oh, i'm sorry my current family oh my family now. let's talk about yes <laughs> yes so i'm married to steve uh -huh. um we met actually at church um, I'm married a little bit. We met and married older. I was in my early thirties okay. when we, when we got married mm -hmm. and, um, and then we have three daughters. Ella is 18 and she's a freshman at okay. Olivet Nazarene university okay. in Bourbonnais. Yeah. So just sent our first one off to college. That's been traumatic mm -hmm. uh, for me. Um, and then, uh, so I have three daughters. My middle daughter is Ava. She's 16 and she's a junior mm -hmm. in high school. And then my youngest, her name is Liza. And she's a freshman in uh -huh. high school and she's uh, about to turn 15 and getting ready to start driving. She's kind of excited oh, about that. So you're, you mean three teenage girls? Yeah. Oh, let, just, just let that sink in for a second. Go, go ahead and pray for me. Go ahead. Go I ahead. will. I will. Yeah, <laughs> I just, we're at that point where we have five and our oldest is 11. And I'm like, there will be a time where we will have five teenagers in the house. And that yeah. just blows my mind it's it's a blessing yeah that's for sure but it's just like okay space let's uh, drive cars i just i can't imagine and you yeah. didn't want to stick the, the you know uh so for liza no e with her no decided well, to, bu it, to buck the trend well it's ella and then ava with an a right. they're all short names though. Uh, okay they're all i should just say this they're all names that are from my history in our family like oh, cool. uh, a couple of generations back i like uh classic older yeah. names yep and thankfully We've my husband mm -hmm. oh there you go yeah yep. there you go. Yep. yeah it's yep. funny because <laughs> our family's really into uh the little house on the prairie just like that's yes that's we've been doing the episodes i think we're in season eight right now and everybody's grown up and the girls that when you know the when the mary and uh laura were younger they really identified with them and they're like oh yeah i'm laura so they would play that way but now that the kids are like they're older and they have hair that's up in a bun they're like i don't know if i did. i really want to be her anymore i'm like well you will but yeah. <laughs> one and of these days three girls yeah. so so let's talk wbgl okay mm -hmm. let's yep. i i know that this is a super neat thing that you guys at wbgl are celebrating your 40th anniversary on the air yeah and uh it's been really neat because wbgl is not i mean it's all encompassing almost like midwest around illinois how big is the listening area Geographically, it covers yeah. from um, we don't get into the city of Chicago, mm -hmm. but in the suburbs. So that ring, yeah. yep. so northern Illinois, all the way to the tip of southern Illinois. Uh, we actually have a translator in Cape Girardeau. Yeah. 
so in Missouri and then Terre Haute, Indiana. And mm -hmm. uh, and so it spills over outside yep. of Illinois yeah. as well. Quite a bit of coverage in Indiana. And yep. so, um, yeah, so it covers a lot of territory. Yeah. And it's uh, our uh, here in Mount Vernon is 89.7. And uh, it's just really neat because all of the hosts and you're at middays with Meredith still, mm -hmm. right? And yep. um, it's just all the hosts are super relational and they just, I, I love what they said. I think yesterday morning they were talking and just about their concept and their, and their purpose behind the show is really not to just be the talking heads, but really interact with the audience. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, you guys call it the WBGL family uh, for That's a reason right. because you're bringing in people, you're talking with them and it's not just, okay, we're on this side of the microphone and you're on the other listening. No, let's, let's integrate that. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's intentional. That's yeah. been very intentional from our leadership all mm -hmm. the way down. Um, and that's really the only way that I would find radio interesting. Yeah. I I'm yeah. I can't be a talking head. I'm not that uh -huh. interesting. <laughs> but I can share with you what Jesus is doing in my life, If I, yeah. especially if I think it might be helpful to you and vice versa. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, def we, we refer to our listeners as family. And yeah. Um, yeah, so I love working in that environment. It's pretty yeah. cool. How long have you been with WBGL? And really just mm -hmm. kind of take me through your history with media. Okay. So um, I've been at WBGL this week. Just as a matter of fact, just this week, I celebrated my 27th. Wow, 27. Yeah, that really That's great. Congratulations. <laughs> no, not at all. You started with as a child. I was very young. As a small very little young. child. <laughs> Well, interestingly, I did not grow up. Um, I actually didn't even grow up with the the idea that, um, you know, that God might have gifted you to do something. Yeah. My dad was a circuit judge. He was oh. a judge for 46 years in the Second Circuit in Southern Illinois. Mm -hmm. And it was his dream that one of his daughters would be a judge someday too. Yeah. go to at least go to law school. And there are four of us and okay. I'm number three out of four. And so by the time he got to me, girls or kids? All girls. So it is a thing in your family. It is a thing in my family. Yeah. I have three nieces and yeah, mm -hmm. um, lots of girls. And so I went to high school. I went, I ended up going to the University of Illinois in Champaign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And uh, I guess I was probably, I think I was like a lot of kids at that point. I didn't know what I was good at. I just, and hadn't been exposed to that many things yeah. Yeah. except for my dad saying law school, law school, law school. Mm -hmm. So I got a bachelor's in something called speech communication, which okay. sounds like it might be related to broadcast, but it's not. Huh. Huh. <laughs> it's really more of a kind of a pre-law mm -hmm. organizational communication huh. kind of thing. And I mean, so I did talk, they know how to talk. Well, right. Yeah. <laughs> But by the time I finished that, I finally had enough understanding that I did not want to go to law school. That was not mm -hmm. something I wanted to do. I, I ended up going to graduate school and, and studying some other things at U of I. And then I worked at the university for a few years. Okay. And um, I was not good at what I did and I didn't enjoy what I did, but mm -hmm. I didn't have enough life experience to know that you could really enjoy your job. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the blessing of the Lord is that I lost my job at the mm -hmm. U of I. And, um, and I spent about six months, probably finally for the first time in my life saying, okay, God, what is it you want? Cause yeah. what I've been pursuing and trying to do is not working. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I was at a loss. I picked up a book called what color is your parachute? Have you ever heard of it? I've not heard of that one. <laughs> it is a book that's coming. I it, It's at least 25 years old and they do uh -huh. an edition. I think almost every year they update uh -huh. it. And it's a, it's a job search book, but more than that, it is a book that helps you figure out what you're gifted at, yeah. what your experience is, the yeah. people you like to work with, all of those kinds of things. And it was homework hmm. that I went through over that six months period. And it was the first time it ever occurred to me that maybe God had designed me to do something yeah. like maybe he had gifted me for a purpose. Yeah. And uh, one of the homeworks in that is that you find somebody doing what you think you'd like to do and you call yeah. them up and interview them. Yeah. And I was really interested in Christian music. And so I called up WBGL. I thought it'd be cool to promote concerts and do that kind of thing. And I said, who does that? And her name was Maria Wallace. She was on the air oh. at the time. And I set up a uh, time with her. I came in and met with her and talked to her, picked her brain about it. And as I was leaving that day, she said, we're thinking about hiring somebody to do this. Do you think you might be interested? Hmm. And I said, yes. And I left there that day knowing I was going to work there. Yeah. And um, it was several months before that actually happened. And when I interviewed 
I said, I don't want to be on the air. I'm not interested in that, but I'd love to work for you. And that's how it started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when did you get, when did you get on the air? Um, after I start, when I started at the time, the station manager was Steve Young and uh, the, the person who did player? the, no. Uh, no, <laughs> no, but the station manager, great guy, <laughs> fantastic guy. He's still in radio. He's at a station in Madison now. And also with him doing mornings was Brant Hansen. Uh-huh. And, um, and Brant is a, just a really supremely talented yeah. uh, radio guy and author and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, at the time they were doing the morning show. I thought they were hilarious. I loved just it around the office talking with them. And they asked, they felt like it would be helpful to have a female voice mm-hmm. on the morning show with them. Yep. And I was the only one who was available, to be honest. And so, and I thought they were funny. So I could come in and laugh at their jokes or yeah. whatever. And yeah. that's how it started. I started out just doing one hour on the air. And yeah. then just gradually over time, I got more comfortable with it and things changed. And then we had different managers that came through. I had a manager, his name was Chuck Pryor. And he was probably the first manager to look at me and say, he, this is your gifting. Here's mm-hmm. what you're good at. And I'm going to, I'm going to promote you to a place where you can use that gift. Yeah. And so that was just yeah. life-changing for me it, and really started me in radio. It's so neat to hear your story and kind of almost see those highlights of how, okay, yeah. I lost my job. I went into the wilderness. I couldn't, and then that book came right at this, the right time to, to change your mindset. So then when God had this thing later on, ready to come, you know, down the pipeline, you mm-hmm. mentally were ready for it. I yeah. Because do you think prior to reading that book and having that six months, if you want to went straight from U of I getting fired to like, okay, I'm going to go and be, hey, I, I know WBGL. I'm just going to walk in there and, and get and, and talk to them. Never in a million years. Yeah. It was the process of doing that homework, but it was also, there was a lot of things happening personally for me too. I'd been in a relationship for a long time. I ended that relationship. It was a time of going, okay, God, I have been trying to do things my own way and it's not working. And so I, it was a time of surrender, not perfect. It was still pretty bumpy for me for quite a while, but it was the beginning of real true surrender Yeah, and um, a years long process, honestly, um, before I really felt like my, my yeah. life and relationship and work and all of that stuff, I'd surrendered it to him. The thing I've learned through those kind of experiences in my life, um, I once did a, a, a court, it was a conference with Don Miller. Do you know Don Miller? Oh, yeah. Blue Light yeah. Jazz and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Storyline yep. conference. I was in college when that book came out. So okay. <laughs> all right. Well, one of the things he encourages you to do it, he did at this storyline conference mm-hmm. was to kind of write out those highlight moments of your life and then look yeah. back over and what have you learned? And one of the things I learned is when I surrender it to Jesus, that's when I get the best life. Yeah. When I surrendered my work to him, when I surrendered my romantic relationships to him, when I surrendered my dreams to him, when I surrender anything to him, mm-hmm. that's when I get the best. That's the lesson I've learned through all those things. Gosh, it really is. It's, it's so uh, poignant for what we're looking at with the Central Family, with our current series, uh, Fresh, New, Full. And we're really, John's looking at John 10, 10, and that God has for us the best life. It's yes. nothing that the thief is still, is kind of trying to steal, kill, and destroy, but he's brought us life and life to the fullest. Mm-hmm. And it is a really, gosh, it's an amazing place to be when you know you're living your best life for God's glory and not your mm-hmm. own, because mm-hmm. there's so many times, and I know in my life, I was trying to be busy with what I was wanting and what I thought I should do. But really when I, gosh, the word surrender is such a pivotal word for so many people. Once we surrender our mm-hmm. will and take his on, there is so much freedom in that. And there's, and just knowing that you're right in the center of God's will and what he wants best in that full, fresh and at life it's right there waiting for you. Yeah. I w- and I would say um, on that, it's not a one-time thing. In mm-hmm. fact, I have found that um, just this last six months, he God has brought me back to that place of, of asking me to surrender all of my work life, surrender all of these things. Like I'm walking through that same process again, yeah. um, you know, at God's direction. You know, sometimes there's like a, a holy discontent in mm-hmm. what you're doing. And it's because God is is stirring something up and there are things that he wants to change. And, and so um, I've started off this new year with a a time of of prayer and fasting and surrendering again, learning to just surrender, you know, even the simple act of surrendering food when you're fasting, like it helps exercise that muscle. Oh yeah. 
laying things down. And so I, I would just say, um, I, I don't want it to sound like, oh, I surrendered it all. And now and my boom, life's perfect. It's, it's not that way. It is a con it is a relationship and a, a constant uh, going back to it. And I'm back in sort of that deep dive of surrender right again. <laughs> yeah. It's a big church word that I don't know if the world knows it too much, but that sanctification it's, yep. It's a it's a one time like you you have it, but then it's a continual renewing like like renewing of your mind and yeah. and yeah. yeah if if and then that's what it, it I hope people that are followers of Christ can can really wrap your head around what you're saying because if you do fall into the trap that it's a one and done type thing, it, it, there's some there's a lot of heartache that's going to come from that. But if you know that you have the Holy Spirit within you pushing you and guiding you and directing you and giving you what you need at that time. It's a, it's like you said, it's a renewal and it's a daily surrender. Yeah. And there's a, I think, you know, in developing a rhythm in your life of uh, those things that support that, mm -hmm. um, you know, spending time in the word. And I don't mean this legalistically at all, just none of that, you know, it's not, you've got to have a half hour a day, but just that spending time in the word and praying um, developing those rhythms, then that is the place of rest. Mm -hmm. It sounds like work, but it's not. The real work comes when we are not doing those things and we're not in connection with him so that he's not able to give us that wisdom to, you know, guide here, turn here. Hey, leave that one alone. Or you know what? Maybe your motivation for that's not quite on target. Can you step back? Or here's yeah. some wisdom for that relationship. All of that stuff comes when we have that rhythm. That's where real rest is, right? Jesus said, come to me. All of you who are weary and heavy burdened, I will give you rest. And to me, that's that's how I've experienced it is in that rhythm of connection with him and that process of sanctification. Yeah, I just, just so much good stuff, Meredith. Thank you so much. And here's what I want to I want to talk about the podcast. Um, okay. To me, it you I, I, I on my end, it's been a super successful thing telling these stories um, and using a long form dialogue conversation to do it. So how did that start? Why the, why the unfolding, why a podcast platform? It actually took many, many years to come to fruition. Um, I, the sort of the background is I've worked in radio and in radio, you have two minutes basically, you know, between songs mm -hmm. to say something, to make a point, to mm -hmm. even share a story. Mm -hmm. But working in Christian radio, you come across all of these incredible stories, like life changing stories that would take 45 minutes to tell. Yeah. And for years, I felt there was a tension. There was like there has to be a way. Now, mm -hmm. at the same time, probably 15 years ago, I started listening to podcast um, shows wow. like This American Life and yeah. those kind of shows where, um, you know, storytelling was front and center. I've always been naturally drawn to that. And I come from a family of storytellers. My dad, as I mentioned earlier, he was a circuit judge, mm -hmm. huge storyteller. That's how we spent family time was sitting around the table and him telling stories. And so I've always had an appreciation for that. So that all was percolating. And then, you know, how God just puts all the elements together. Um, one of my coworkers, he was our production director at the time at WBGL. His name is Jason Rackow. And after staff meetings, we would sit around, we'd be the only two left at the table, and we would start talking about some episode of a podcast we had mm -hmm. listened to. And this was kind of before the big wave of podcasting. Yeah. Had, you know. So there wasn't really, you know, most other people at the table hadn't even heard of a podcast, but uh -huh. we were talking about it. And then those conversations sort of naturally gravitated toward what if we did something and what might that look like and what would it be? And then and I just always had a fire for that idea before I even knew what the form was going to be. But over time, and this is literally over years, this is probably a seven year process. Um, you know, I went to a podcast conference. I went to the storyline conference and learned mm -hmm. about structure of stories and how powerful stories are. And the fact that Jesus wired our brains to respond to story. Mm -hmm. It's why he talked in parables because he knows those are impactful for us. All of those elements kind of came together and it just, all of a sudden it was like, well, this is obvious. Yeah. We need to be telling these stories. Why wouldn't we do that? And we also had a coworker. His name at the time was Joe. His name is still Joe Buchanan. He's not <laughs> my coworker anymore. Uh, he's in our network, but not at our station. And Joe has one of the most compelling God stories I have first one. ever heard. He's mm -hmm. the first episode. And that's kind of what helped us pull the trigger. It was like, yeah. well, we know the story we need to start with. Yeah. And, um, and thankfully, Joe is just an incredible, can tell his story mm -hmm. in an incredibly compelling way. Yeah. 
And so that's, we just, we started, we had talked about it for so long. My boss and station manager, Jeff Scott, finally said to me at an end of year review, start the podcast, oh, no yeah. more excuses, just start it. That's so cool. Yeah. And so have leadership was, behind you and be like, no, I know yes. this is something you've been doing. Go for it. Yeah. Run. Yeah. 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 I am really grateful. We work in an environment. Um, this is huge to me and means so much to me personally, but we work in an environment where they, our leadership says, uh, if you have a, a God sized dream and mm -hmm. if you can articulate it well and make a case for it, we will bless it. If we are able, we'll bless it and you take off. And they have done that. And that's why. So a Jason Rackow to be the producer leadership that says go, an mm -hmm. idea that just seemed obvious. And so that's that's how we started it. Yeah. It's been it's been neat to watch. I mean, it's something I watch with our big girl or listen with our big girls, uh, especially when we're in a long car ride. And there are, you know, there's just the storytelling is done really well. You ask, you do a great job just kind of almost getting out of the way so they can tell their story that, that yeah. you're asking the right questions for them to do that. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's thank you, Meredith, for telling those stories and, and really taking, taking the mantle of, Hey, let's do this because these God needs this story of God needs to be heard through this person's life. Yeah. Well, I believe, and we believed before we started it, if we tell these stories, mm -hmm. then people's lives will be changed because when you hear it, you cannot help, but believe if God did that in that person's life, maybe he could do it in mine. Yeah. And so we just went on faith that that's that God was going to do that. And um, and it's totally been God. I mean, there's been a grace and a favor to do it. Mm -hmm. And as long as we have that, we'll do that. If God ever lifts it and said time yeah. to do something else, there's no way I could do it. <laughs> I could not do it without it. He's been super um, yeah. just graceful and faithful in it. Yeah. And that's really how we met was we were at a Matt Powell concert and you were here at Central and with Mike Dunhee. And recording in uh, one of the communications offices here, you borrowed during before uh, the concert, and it was just it was neat to see you guys do that. And then we were having a, ch a chance to chat. I know John had a chance to chat with you too. And you have a, a fr it, who you are over in the ears are the same in person, and you're you're not you're not fronting. That's for sure, Marriage Foster. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said earlier, I've done it 27 years, and maybe early on. I, you know, maybe early on and in the years when I was doing a morning show, I might have thought I was all that, but yeah. I know very well that I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and authenticity rules over everything. Yeah. Yep. So here's speaking of authenticity, we're going to go a little deeper with you, Meredith Foster. We're going to ask you the question that we ask all of our guests on the Central Weekly. We'll be right back after this because we're going to ask you the question, how has God been working in your life lately? We'll be right back after this. And we're back with Meredith Foster from WBGL and the Unfolding Podcast with our question from the Central Weekly. Meredith Foster, how has God been working in your life lately? Wow. Um, it just interestingly, this is interesting timing that you're asking about this right now. At the end of the year last year, in the fall, I began feeling a stirring that... Um, and I don't, I don't want to say too much because I really don't know what's going to happen. But I felt a stirring that guy was saying, "Prepare for a change." Yeah. And I'm, I'm not, not you don't exactly want to do sure. Any exclusives for the century. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'll be yeah. honest. Mm -hmm. But the stirring was enough that I prayed through it to say, "Is this just a discontent, or is this a holy discontent?" And uh, I felt like God was saying, "This is me. I want you to follow me on a journey." And um, and so then towards the end of the year, it became very clear that uh, starting January 1st, I was going to enter into a time of pretty intense uh, prayer and fasting. And I'm not a faster. I don't do it regularly. It's been years since I have. So I'm not saying this like I'm an expert by any stretch yep. um, or have even done it regularly. But it was very clear that it was time to make space for God to speak. And so I began that on January 1st and um, it has been, so what I thought he was going to be speaking about was my work life. Like, is he changing direction? What's going on here? And that may come, but of course, God is so good. <laughs> what he's been speaking about is my heart life, uh -huh. is my internal stuff mm -hmm. about relationships. And one of the things, here's what I, here's my big picture answer to you is that, he has shown me how much of my work 
relationships, personal, all across the board, how much of my life has been driven by a fear of not having enough. Wow. Uh, and it just drives so many things. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that includes my, my podcast work that includes like my relationships with my kids and includes so many things over and over again. uh, You know, I have lived with a, a pressure, a, um, like a constant sense of, I got to keep working or it's not going to get done a hustle and hurry mentality. That was just kind of a low grade thing. And he has, uh, I'm super grateful. He has, first of all, shown me that that's what's going on. And he has, uh, he is in the process of breaking that off. Yeah. So that's been amazing. It is just beginning. I'm also really certain that this is going to not just going to be a 21 day thing, but I, this is going to carry into probably a month's long process that I can't even ask the question, what do you want me to do professionally until we yeah. we're working on the the heart stuff? Yeah. So that's what he's doing. And I have found, I'll just say this for anybody who might be interested in fasting. um, Of course, always, it's always within the realm of, you know, if you're talking about food or that kind of thing, please medically, you want to check with your doctor. I don't, you know, I'm not making any blanket recommendations Mm -hmm. about that. Uh, Maybe it's something else that you rely on that you'll give up. I have found though, I've had more clarity. I've been able to hear from God much more clearly in this season of fasting than I have in probably years. Yeah. And so um that key that gives me fuel to keep going. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. I it may end up being a change in my work life, but it's already changing my yeah. my relationships with my kids. That's the key. Yeah. My husband, my relationship with God. Here's the the scripture that he's given me is he's lifted off that like, okay, you don't have to hustle. You don't have to hurry. Um, it, you know, it's no longer about fear of not having enough. Mm-hmm. The scripture is second Corinthians uh, chapter nine and verse eight. And it says, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Yeah. So that doesn't mean. I'm going to make $600,000 a year. It doesn't mean all of that. What it means is every work he calls me to, he will provide in abundance what I need in order to do that. So if that means parenting my kids, if that means engaging with them spiritually, if that means um, growing my relationship with my husband, if that means changing what I do professionally, if it means any of those things, if that's what God's calling me to do, Mm -hmm. he will provide. And I no longer have to live with that. Fear of not having enough, not being enough, not doing enough, all of that stuff being lifted off. So how about that for a deep dive answer? (laughs) That's where I am. (laughs) That was good. And it's neat how it correlates. I mean, we're right in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle of a 23-day fast for our central family. And and it is, and it's crazy that how our eyes and our heart can be opened when we, I don't want to say deprive ourselves, but when we take off a little bit of that flesh that we're Mm -hmm. always entangled in. And we take that off and we say, no, this is, I'm focusing on what you want, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want your will to be done. And I want you to speak as boldly and as loudly as you can, Holy Spirit, in my life. And And sometimes it's a matter. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, sometimes it's just a matter of making space for him, like literally making space for him to speak. Yep. Because if we're too crowded, it's you're crowding him out. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things I'm learning through this process is Mm -hmm. that fasting makes space for God to speak. Because my tendency, in fact, I would say my way of life has been, if I have a free moment, Mm -hmm. I pick up my phone and I'm checking notifications or Facebook or email, or I'm listening to a podcast, I'm constantly, uh, you know, putting stuff in. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the things that's been sort of a, uh, you know, crash course for me during this period of fasting is like making space for him to speak. Even something as simple as giving up, I'm not having a meal during this time. I'm not cooking. I'm not preparing. I'm going to spend that time uh, speaking. And then just uh, it's that coupled with uh, an effort to spend more time praying. And those two things together have brought a clarity. And what I'm learning is that doesn't happen if if I'm not intentional. And that brings it back to that surrender. Because if I would, if I follow my natural course, I'm going to sit on the couch and binge watch The Office for an hour or two, right? That's my natural inclination. And every once in a while, that's okay. But if that's the rule of my life, then I'm sacrificing this clarity and hearing from God and just that transformation. Yeah. Well, Meredith Foster, 
Thank you so much for joining us. And it was a refreshing conversation and a, a conversation that I think is going to impact a lot of people because I think a lot of people are in the same similar life situations that you've been going through and you've learned some lessons. God has taught you some things. He spoke boldly to you in a way, and I'm glad that they could hear your story. Thank you for having me so much. I love what you guys are doing at Central Christian. I just, it's so clear that it's a dynamic community and people are bought in and yeah. just as you guys are growing together. And I love that you're doing this podcast. So thanks. Real privilege for me to get to be a part of it. Thank you. And I think Kane's coming. Kane, the band is coming in March. So you got a schedule to come down here again. All right. Good deal. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Sounds well, thank good. You, Meredith. And, thank, and seriously, everybody, if you haven't had a chance to check out the Unfolding Podcast, it's wherever your podcasts are. Check that out. Dive into those and take, you know, take a take a second to listen to what God is doing in powerful ways through people in our church family abroad. And uh, just Meredith, thank you again so much. And for uh, and for being so honest about what God's been doing in your life. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Hey, and that's it for episode number 46 of the Central Weekly. Thank you so much to Meredith Foster from WBGL and the Unfolding Podcast. It was it just it was a refreshing conversation, I thought. She has a great voice. She mm-hmm. has a great personality, great spirit for exactly what she does. And I think God's got her right in uh, kind of a wheelhouse spot for her. So we challenge you, take a, take a second to uh, share uh, this podcast with somebody that needs to hear what God is doing in Meredith's life and what he can do in your life if you choose rest. We'll see you back here next weekend with the Central Weekly with another guest and we're going to be talking about the company we keep. We'll see you then. Bye, John.